Hi, so I'm Rebecca. I'm from The Nocturnal. How are you guys today? Good. Great. All right, Charles, let's start with you. So what was your inspiration for the film? Uh, my three older brothers and to a, a degree, my, my oldest sister. Um, I had, they were, they were much older than me. Mm -hmm. So I was able to kind of watch them from a distance and see how they interacted with each other. And, and, and since I had I made the proclamation that I was going to be a filmmaker when I was nine, oh. um, I, I looked at everything in terms of story. And I thought that my family uh, in many ways was just as, uh, the, the, they were just as defining of what I knew about storytelling as any movie that I had watched. So I chose to tell a story about four brothers uh, and then what happened, what would happen if I threw the grenade of snitching into it. Okay, okay. And Omar, along with being one of the main characters, you were also one of the executive producers. So how'd that collab happen between you guys? Well, basically, I bullied Charles into it. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is this is his definitely his baby, but it, it became our baby. You know, it, it, this has been an eight year journey um, to get this project made. So just through the course of, um, you know, story development and just the whole gamut of making a film, you know, we we it, we bonded a, a, a partnership in it. Mm -hmm. And um, and Michael Ely joined in in on that and and definitely had it, his hands in the pot as well. Um, so it was just and for me, just in my career, it's just a progression. It's an evolution. It's not like taking on a new um, title or whatever. The title really doesn't mean anything. It's it, it just, it's the work that you do behind it. Mm, definitely, definitely. And you mentioned it took eight years for the entire pr production and project. So why did it take so long? Well, we got a lot of no's, um, and I don't know why, <laughs> unintended, but because um, <laughs> we just felt like we had a great film, a great story. But you know, I'm I'm a believer um, of div divine poetry, mm -hmm. and things happen at their own timing. And as as arduous as that can be at times, you just have to. If it's something that you believe in and that you're passionate about, then you keep moving forward. You know, and I guess the universe said, hey, it's time for y'all to make this film. Okay. And when I was watching the film, I was like watching, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is so good. Like there was moments where I was just like, oh, I did not expect that. So it was like a lot of like, it was thriller, but shocking as well. Like the suspense was there. And so I, for you guys to get no's, I'm surprised because it was actually very good. Thank you. Of course, of course. Thank and you, so man. while writing the film, what, there were like a lot of themes of family, you know, the justice system and addiction. So Charles, why was that so important for you to make sure that you mentioned? Uh, it, it was important to, you, you know, uh, there were a lot of films that I had watched, Hell or High Water, Mystic River, The mm -hmm. Town, uh, Gone Baby Gone. There were a lot of films that I saw that were being made by the mainstream culture that was showing the exact same thing that I felt was going on on our side of the fence. Mm. And so for me, one of the things that was very specific about uh, how to do this movie, how to be very specific about our culture was to step out and look at it from a blue collar middle class perspective. Mm. And in that, I had to include the things that naturally came with thrillers. And so it's, it's, it's an homage to blue collar life, middle class life with uh, criminal elements coming in from the fringes and what comes with criminal element, those things that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there was a relatable scene in the film where the family is sitting at the dinner table and there's, you could just sense that there's an elephant in the room, right? So how hard or easy was it to exude that vibe from that film? And Omar, from an acting standpoint, what was it like for you to like express those, those emotions so that viewers can feel that as well? Yeah, um, I, I just think that we have 
well, I know that we have a wonderful cast, wonderful cast. And so, you know, creating that vibe at the dinner table was so easy. Um, you know, Glenn Turman in my eyes is a legend, you know, Vanessa Bell Calloway, is, she's a legend, Mama Bear, like, you know, and so, and then just, just that family, the familial aspect of it uh, to me was easy. It's just those little undertones of what's going on. And that, when you say that word relatable, you know, that's to me part of the brilliance of the film, but because everyone can see a piece of their family in those type of moments. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I remember, you know, when Nana had had that dinner and we were all at and cousin such and such came through and you know, yeah. he or she just did such and such, but ain't nobody saying nothing. And, you know, <laughs> you know, it's just creating those uh, uh, uncomfortable moments actually from an acting perspective is is sort of fun because at that point you you're ahead of the audience they don't know what's going to happen mm. but it's it's playing it in a way where the characters don't know what's going to happen either so and that's how you keep those moments fresh so hopefully um, um what you just described the audience will feel it the same way you did definitely and charles how about you um with with the family dinners you know it, it's it's one thing to sort of write them a certain way. I, you, I had George Tillman's soul food to look at um, and, and be inspired by, but I also knew that the big thing about family dinners is that not, a lot of people don't want to have them. That's very true. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and so I wanted to examine how it would go from everybody looking forward to seeing each other to getting to a place where they're like, I really don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to be a part of that because we've got all of this other stuff around us, you know? Uh, and so I know sometimes the best part of family dinners would be like the grumbling before you finally got to the table because people were having all of their own emotions with each other. And then when they got to the table, they would set it aside. So I wanted to examine that. Definitely. When that scene approached, I was like, I can correlate that with my own life and dealing with my own situations where I'm just like, oh my gosh, I could do anything but do this. I will go to the doctors before yeah. I sit at this dinner table. So yeah. I completely, like, that's why I was like, that was very relatable because it was like, there's times when we would have dinner tables, it's like pulling teeth to get everybody at that table because you just know that something could happen or something's going to be said and then it's just going to the pot opens and it just explodes everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And so, and another thing with that scene was it the, the dinner scenes eventually become in line with the scenes that Ely has when he's in interrogation. Yeah. So it, it, it becomes less about being familial and more about getting to some uncomfortable truth. So for me, it was, uh, it went from family dinners to there's one of my favorite movies is a movie that only takes place in a jury room. It's called 12 Angry Men. Mm -hmm. And that movie's about getting to a truth. So I wanted that arc to go from family dinner to 12 Angry Men. And my last question, right? So there's a negative connotation when you think of the word snitch, right? Sometimes when it comes to certain things that need to be said and people are like, no, snitches get stitches, you know that phrase. But do you feel like sometimes things need to be said for the greater good? Yes, but I think that they also need to be, they also need to be said at a time when it can cause fracture and it can cause chaos because the greater good is not an easy road. How about you, Omar? Snitches get stitched. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, it's one of those things. I mean, if you, when you're talking about, um, we're talking about family, you know, the criminality of things is a different conversation, but I think that even within family, there's always family, quote unquote, secrets. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, such and such never told me that, 
this one went through that when they were 17 or 18 or whatever the case, you know, and people carry that with one another, right? It sometimes, other times there's those families where it, it spills out. And so I think what Charles said is the main point is it's all about the greater good. And, and you're, and he's right. The greater good isn't, it's never is a, a, an easy road in that way. So it's not, the connotation what we're dealing with in the film it's not like from the connotation of like hip-hop era you know they run around selling drugs and gun, you know what i mean it's it, it's a way deeper uh, it has a way deeper meaning than that definitely definitely but guys thank you so much for joining with me today it was amazing talking to you guys and the film was so good that I'm gonna go to the theaters to watch it again. Cause I told my friends, I was like, we have to go see it. You guys gotta see it on the big screen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank oh, you. That's, that's, that's great. great. That's great. Okay.